beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, we talk all about businesses, how to start a business, run a business, grow a business, where you can find funding for your business and all of the things in between. So if you are interested in that sort of thing, go ahead and click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything and go ahead and click the like button and also comment because we built a little bit of a community here helping each other get that financial freedom that we're looking for everybody needs it everybody wants it so go ahead and make sure you help others by commenting in the comment box below and putting ideas out there that i may not have shared that you may know about that i may not know about and then the next person may not know about and we can help each other all year long so it's free guys it's really free just to click like so go ahead and do that for me now we're gonna talk about businesses that you can start in 2023. In my latest video, I put out a bunch of grants that everybody can apply for. You all absolutely loved it, but some people were like, I'm really lost because I don't know what business to start. I don't have a business. It's great that there's so much money out here to be had, but I just don't know what business to start. So can you help me with that? And so I thought it was important to do this video also because I've been seeing on TikTok and you know youtube shorts a lot of younger people or you know not even middle-aged people but people in their like early 20s early 30s um basically saying like i'm burnt out i have the sunday blues i'm tired of working a nine to five i just want to be free all i want to do is be able to take a vacation with my family and not have to worry about work or not have to worry about money I'm tired of going to work a nine to five and then taking the money that I work for and I'm paying a car note, I'm paying a mortgage, I'm paying, you know, for food and all of this stuff. The reason why people are depressed and down is because they're not doing what they love. They doing what they have to. That's what the workforce and work world do. It steals dreams. People have to compromise their dreams just to survive. This stuff, reason, which, by the way, guys, that's just reality. We're gonna have to be paying a bill pretty much until the day we die. Um, you're always gonna need a cell phone or a home phone. You're always, in this day and age, are gonna need some sort of internet or Wi-Fi or something. You're gonna need it. Um, you don't have to pay a car note if you buy your car in cash, but if you wanna drive something that you can't afford to buy in cash, then you're gonna be paying a car note. You always need some place to live. You always need food. So you're going to be paying. I would prefer you pay a mortgage because then, you know, you own it. Um, some people have obstacles that they have to jump over where, you know, you have to be a renter for a small amount of time. And that's perfectly fine as well. Just as long as your goal is to own because then you build equity in your home and all that good stuff. But, you know, these are the things that we have to work for um, so that we can live but you don't have to work as hard you don't have to be in a miserable job you can put as much effort into yourself and growing yourself and your business that you do into growing someone else's if you're spending all day you know if you have a nine to five let's say you start at 8 a.m and you don't find yourself getting off of your computer or getting off of work until 9 p.m and you're salaried Whatever salary you're getting, you might as well chop that in half because you're putting in double time for the same amount of money. If you're going into a job and you have to work overtime to make ends meet, then it's really not working for you because time is the only thing in this world that we cannot get back and you want to spend your time wisely. I hate working! I hate it! 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 I hate it, I hate it so much! So, this is why I always say it's important to have multiple streams of income. Today, I'm going to give you several businesses that you can start in 2020, 2023 with very, either zero or very limited amounts of money to start. The businesses that I'm going to give to you, they do take work, of course, as anything does. I'm going to give them to you and then <clears throat> if you want to see a tutorial on how exactly each and every step that you need to go through to start these businesses, 
and you let me know which one in the comments below that you want to see a tutorial on and I will do a tutorial on those particular businesses but for now because I don't want this video to be extremely long and I'm just trying to give these different ways for you to start a business and a little bit of details in between um, this is why I'm doing this so make sure you watch the video to the end and you go ahead and put your comment in the comment box like hey I want to learn more about this business can you do a tutorial on this or that but watch until the end because I have something really special for you guys so the first business that you can start I know you've heard about it before but I'm bringing it out again number one is going to be a drop shipping business there are two ways that you can do drop shipping you can do drop shipping by finding a supplier and having that supplier ship the product directly to Amazon and having an Amazon seller central account and selling that product via FBA meaning when the supplier ships the product from their facility to Amazon Amazon's team then is responsible for any orders that are coming through on your Amazon Seller Central account. They have to package it up and then ship it out to the consumer. When you do FBA as well, then you're a part of Prime, which means your product gets to that customer within two days minimum. Um, and so that's a great thing. So number one is drop shipping. You could do it that way with Amazon FBA or I found that some people like to start their own Shopify stores and then they do drop shipping that way. There is a company called Overlo that you can use on Shopify as an app. You download it to your Shopify store and then you find products that you want to drop ship to consumers and it will go whenever a consumer go into your site and they click on I want to buy earrings. Then those earrings are going to come directly from the supplier at Overlo and go to the consumer so these are very minimal startup costs if you go the FBA way you're gonna have to probably order about a thousand units of whatever it is that you're selling or maybe even less it just depends but I wouldn't recommend starting with more than a thousand dollars so order whatever a thousand dollars can get you okay um, and then with FBA you do have to pay fees if you're gonna be sending it to Amazon's warehouses which Rightfully so, they're going to be packing the product and shipping the product out for you. So they're going to get some sort of fee. If you do it via Shopify and Oberlo, your only cost will be $29.99 a month to operate your Shopify site. They do have a 14-day trial um, for a majority of people. But if you're an African-American person and your business is operated and owned by 51% african-american then you could go to 1 million businesses and get um a 120 day um trial and then see how that works out for you so you'll get about four months of um fees waived also if you're going the amazon route you can sign up for the amazon black business program and they will give you a 500 dollars stipend so you don't have to pay the 20 no what is the Oh, Amazon Seller Central is $39.99 a month. I forgot to tell you about that. So you don't have to pay that fee if you get into the Amazon Black Business program. They will waive it for you and send you a $500 stipend for that fee. So basically, it'll come out of your business account, $39.99 a month. But um, the Black Business program will give you that $500 up front into your business bank account. So each month when the $39.99 comes out, basically that fee will take care of it so if you go the Amazon FBA route you'll be spending a thousand dollars on product and you'll be spending um, either the $39.99 a month to have Amazon Seller Central or if you're a part of the black business um, the Amazon black business program then you is zero cost to you to have Seller Central for an entire year so um one thousand five hundred dollars plus amazon fees is what you would spend if you're not in the amazon black business program if you are you would spend one thousand dollars plus amazon fees because you have to purchase your own supply so again number one would be drop shipping also a quick tip on drop shipping if you don't know what product you want to sell make sure you research things see what's trending in the market and also use tiktok made me buy it because these products are blowing up on tiktok and you know you can find that product in china somewhere on alibaba and have that product drop shipped 
to the customer. Um, so utilize those methods to try to figure out what it is that you know you want to sell. When I order from Alibaba, I always order a sample first so that I can check quality and make sure the product is good before I decide to ship it off to Amazon and sell it or put it on my website. So I ordered my wick trimmers um, through Alibaba and I got samples first. They sent me pictures galore um, and we worked really well together and this is a phenomenal product. I mean, they are so sharp. They really cut wicks really well, so I'm really happy with this, and I was able to get a good price on it. Also, um, when you order from Alibaba, of course, um, a lot of the companies are overseas, so they ship via sea. For these particular wick trimmers and snuffers and all of that, I decided to have it shipped by air, so it cost me a little more money um, to do that, but I preferred to do that because I didn't want to wait 30 to 60 days for them to get here by boat when I could get them in two weeks, so that's up to you and that would be an additional cost it just depends on how much money you have to push towards this particular business again if you want to learn more and you want to go through the steps of how to do it how to find the suppliers all of that good stuff comment below and we can get a tutorial going okay now number two what do you think number two is print on demand no it's not dead people are still using print on demand um how to utilize print on demand you go ahead and you start a shopify store i don't know if godaddy or wix or any of those other sites do print on demand i use shopify it's easy it's simple it's the best thing for me to do um so i'm gonna re recommend shopify so again you have to start a shopify store you're going to get the 14 day free trial. You can get the 120 day free trial. <coughs> but after the trial is over, it's going to be $29.99 per month for your Shopify store. Um, so you're going to pay $29.99 a month. That's one fee. Um, outside of that, print on demand is basically completely free. You just find the print on demand company that you want to work with. There's Printify, there's Printful, there's a bunch of companies that you can download their app directly into your Shopify store and get to work um, with those companies. But basically you create your design on a t-shirt, joggers, notebooks, um, some of them have gym shoes, like whatever it is you want to do. You create your design, you put that design onto whatever product you want to sell, and then you mark your price. So. On, I know Printful for sure they have um, very quality t-shirts and then they have low budget t-shirts. They also have eco-friendly t-shirts. So it just depends on what branding you're going for with your business. Do you want it to be an eco-friendly t-shirt business, eco-friendly um, notebook business, whatever it, excuse me, whatever it is. Um, you just choose what you want to do and then you go from there. So for um, some of the t-shirts, they can range from $10 to $15 to maybe even $20 per unit through your print on demand um, partner. And so what this means is after you put your design on the product, you will pay $20 for that particular product. So say it's a t-shirt and they're charging $14.95. So $14.95, you're not gonna pay it up front though. Best way to describe it, if you're charging $10 per t-shirt and you were actually making the t-shirt from home, you would basically take out the cost that it cost you to make the t-shirt. So let's say it costs you a dollar for the t-shirt and then another dollar for all of the like um, inks and whatever else you're putting on the t-shirt. So then your profit after you take out the $2 is going to be $8 from that $10 t-shirt, right? Um, and then whatever it costs to ship. But when you do print on demand, if they're charging you $10 per t-shirt, you're gonna have to then make the t-shirt instead of $10, you're gonna have to make it say 15 or $20 in order for you to get any profit. Because what they're doing for you is printing your design on that t-shirt, packaging it up, and then shipping it out to whatever customer comes onto your website and orders that t-shirt. 
So if they say, okay, this t-shirt, this particular material, whatever, is going to be $10 and you just leave it at that, whenever the customer comes onto your site to order the t-shirt, you're going to get nothing because that $10 is going to go to your supplier. I think print on demand is an amazing way to start, but as you continue to grow, I would cut off that supplier and find a way to make um, the product in-house or find a factory near you that can do that for you for a cheaper cost. When you use print on demand suppliers, you're really paying for convenience. Um, it's the convenience of never having to touch the product. Now I would say once you start out, I would order a different a couple of different t-shirts or notebooks or whatever it is you're making just to see you know does this look good is this something that I want to move forward with is my design aligned properly you know are the colors popping you could do that with two different um print on demand suppliers so you could go to printful and you could go to printify you can make the same exact product have it shipped to you and then you test the quality that way but as you begin to grow and now you're selling 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 units a month, then you're like, wait a minute, they're getting half of my profit, you know? So you wanna bring in more in-house so that you make more of the profit. But to start doing print on demand is amazing. If you so just think about it. If you sell a thousand t-shirts a month, right? Although the t-shirt is $20 on your site, you're only gonna get $10 of profit, remember. You'll make $10,000 that month, but they'll also make $10,000 off of what you're selling. If you bring it in-house, then you can make $15,000 a month because you're no longer paying them $10 per unit um, for the product. You're getting more, you know? Um, so a thousand t-shirts a month, if that is your goal and you aim for that and you could get an additional $10,000 a month profit for what you're selling, I would say that's pretty dang on good, right? It's pretty good for you to have that um, coming in extra on top of whatever other stream of income you have. Let's say you're doing print on demand, you're getting $10,000 a month from that. You find a star product and you've been shipping that, drop shipping to um, Amazon FBA and that product is selling great and you're getting $10,000 a month on that. You're now making $20,000 additional a month from the products that you're selling via Amazon and from the products that you're selling via print on demand. That's two ways to make $20,000 extra a month if your product takes off and you put the work in to get it out there. I mean, come on, why not? Um, so that's number two, print on demand. Number three is going to be eBooks. So creating a digital eBook. If you have any sort of expertise or something that you can teach the people, put it in an ebook and sell it. Some people get greedy and they sell their ebooks for $9.99. You know, <laughs> if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend doing that. You really have to, you know, try to build a following and get it out there and make people want to purchase your ebook. Um, so for me, my expertise is not only just being a business owner and starting businesses and doing all that good stuff, but I have a candle business. And if you go to some of my earlier videos, that is what I talked about a lot because I wanted to help others start candle businesses. But you know, before then and since then, I ventured into other things. So I created an ebook, which is a candle making workbook for the people who make candles you know that it can be difficult to try to remember like oh my gosh what was my you know I tested this candle but what was my wax to fragrance ratio oh my gosh I can't remember what size wick I used or what temperature I poured it at all of those things so this digital ebook is printable you can print it as many times as you want and it gives you these little worksheets for your testing where you can write down all of the things you're doing as you're testing each and every candle which I used before I put it out there and I thought like man if this helps me so much then I could put it out there to the people who follow my channel who may need help with you know organizing things or 
need something to really put all the you know the things that they're doing and testing down so I created that digital ebook and I put it out there for $9.99 I didn't want to make it expensive you know $9.99 that's two coffees a week or you know a lunch so and you could print it as many times as you want so you really get a really great value with that and I you know continue to use my ebook myself because it's just very helpful to have those sheets and I even put mine in a binder so I can go back to oh I tested this before and this is what happened oh and then I tested this and you know and just go from there um, so an ebook is a great idea there are so many ways to push it out again if you want to learn more about creating this digital ebook and putting it out there and what programs I use to get paid and to publish it and all of that stuff comment in the description box below and I will do a tutorial on how to create an ebook number four is YouTube starting YouTube was hard for me <laughs> I didn't know that my you know if anybody was gonna, gonna view my videos or whatever um, and so my first video was very awkward and I didn't know what I was doing and um, it, it was just something. So I created the first video and then I just kind of left it. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back into it. I'm going to create this video, tell people how I started my candle business and go from there. And eventually I started getting views and people were commenting and liking and watching the videos. I was like, okay. Then I got my first thousand followers and my first 4,000 watch hours and YouTube sending me an email time to monetize I had no idea that's what you needed I just started the channel um and so I was like okay now I can you know monetize so there will be ads on some of my videos for people who don't have premium or whatever it is and then I can make a little money from this and so you know with just a thousand followers you're not getting much you're probably getting 20 bucks a month and then it went up from there and then you start getting a couple of hundred dollars a month and then it goes up from there and you start to get a couple of thousand dollars a month and you know a lot of that too comes with brand partnerships and um, sponsorships and things of that nature now with my channel I don't do a lot of that I don't like to push a lot of that out there especially you know you have brands coming to you and they're like hey I'll give you free product if you basically just do a a shout out on your channel and show the product and you know I'm like no I'm not gonna do it for free because first of all I have to you know get myself all made up come down do the video and then I have to spend two minutes or 60 seconds in the beginning of my vid video shouting out your product for free um, I also have to edit these videos and that takes time as well you can't just and some people do but for me you know there may be a moment where I cough or one of you know my son comes down and he's talking to me and I'm like wait I'm doing a video so let's edit that out um so you have to edit the videos you've got to pick the right music you've got to you know write what you're putting in your description box and all of that stuff and then when people comment you have to make the time to respond to those comments as well so YouTube I would say is not easy but it's fun and I like it I like helping people I like sharing information and it's a plus that I actually get extra money you know from doing it now I'm only at about almost 17,000 subscribers and I get a you know a nice little penny a nice little coin um, every month so I can only imagine what the people who have 50,000 100,000 like 2 million followers you know the type of coin that they get if they're consistent doing their videos because if you're not putting out videos and let's say you're getting paid two thousand dollars this month but then you stop putting out videos then that amount starts to dwindle um youtube gives you estimated revenue but you don't get the final revenue until that particular payday for that month so you could start you know february 1st at two thousand dollars and by the end of the month you're at five hundred dollars it just depends um so it's not like consistent but it's still extra money and i always make sure that i do you know what i need to do and make enough videos and i have the brand partnerships that i with brands that i want to work with that i feel that i can put out there to you all 
and I'm actually using this product. I actually like the product. I vetted the product and I'm okay with sharing it. Also because they respected me enough to say, hey, I'm going to compensate you for your time. If you're coming with free stuff, don't even email me because I'm not going to do it for free. And I think it's a slap in the face because there's other girls out there, or other YouTubers, guys, whatever, that you probably wouldn't do that to. Um, so anyway, so number five is going to be government contracting. Government contracting is definitely not easy. There are so many steps that you have to go through in between. You can't just start this as a sole proprietor. You have to have an LLC. You have to have some sort of corporation to be able to do this. So have your LLC, have your EIN, have a business bank account. Those are first. And then you can go register to be a government contractor. Generally with government contracting, they like you to register with your state. Um, it just depends on what state you're in. You don't necessarily have to. You don't have to be registered with the F SBA or anything like that. That doesn't matter. What's most important is that you have your business established properly and then you sign up um, to be a government contractor on SAM.gov. SAM.gov is then going to give you um, your UEI number and they're also going to give you your cage number, which is very important with government contracting. Also know what your what your NAX code is, what your NAX code, I mean, it's N-A-I-C-S. I don't really know what every letter stands for, but a NAX code basically is a code that they give you that determines what type of business, what type of business your government contracting is and what type of services you can provide. So there's a NAX code for janitorial services. There's a NAX code for, um, products and goods and, and body products, whatever it is, there's a NAX code for it. So you have to make sure that when you're signing up for SAM.gov, you enter <clears throat> all of the NAX codes for whatever type of services or products that you're offering. Um, that's going to be important. So if you didn't know, the government needs soap bars for prisons or government facilities. They need trash bags because there's always trash that needs to be, you know, picked up. They need vending machines for different facilities that they run and, you know, they have people coming in and out. So they need vending machines. They need janitorial services. They need, you know, if you own a company that has nurses, they need that. The government needs everything. Um, so you can sign up for, not sign up, but a Put your bid in for a government contract if it's a service that you can particularly offer or if you know a company that can offer that service and then you're the middleman um, sourcing out that company to do the work for the contract that you were awarded. It's not easy. You can sign up to do government contracting and not get your first contract for a year um, or not get a contract at all. Or you can get one contract a year that's worth maybe $50,000 a year and then the next year you get nothing. It just depends. When you go in and you place these bids, you don't know what the person next to you or whatever is putting their bid in as. If you're bidding $50,000, they could be bidding thirty, forty thousand. dollars $40,000. And of course, the government wants to save money, so they're going to take the business that is wanting them to pay less. Now. If you're an African-American person and your business is 51% minority owned, woman owned, you know, then they set aside money for those particular businesses. It's multi-billions that they set aside um, for you if you're an African-American person. And if you know the government, they have to spend whatever budget they are giving that year up to the cent. They have to spend it. If they don't, then they don't get as much in their budget the following year, right? And if they tend to maybe go over a little bit, then maybe they'll get more. But they have to spend it or they risk the chance of not getting that same amount the following year or even getting more of a budget. So it has to be spent. So if you want to learn more about government contracting, comment in the comment box below and we'll go through that as well. But 
it, let's say you get a $50,000 contract. If you're the middleman and the company over here is saying, well, I'm charging $25,000 for that service. You give them their $25,000, you keep your $25,000, and you didn't have to do a thing. Um, you just found the contract, won the bid, and then sourced out a company to do it. Also note, if you source out a company, make sure you do your due diligence because if they don't do the work, it's going to reflect negatively on you. And when it reflects negatively on you and you're not able to get the job done as you have said you could do, then they'll kick you out of the system and you cannot get another government contract. So, um, with all of the businesses, you know, now we're up to what? $55,000 a month in additional money, additional income. I think that's pretty good. It's more than you can make in a nine to five every month. And then if you're still keeping your nine to five, whatever you're making there, that could be another $10,000 a month or 20,000, whatever you make, you know, doing your nine to five. And so you're up to 65, $75,000 a month. There's gonna be a point where you're like, hey, I'm done with this nine to five. I'm gonna go start living my life like it's golden. I'm gonna go travel. I'm gonna do all of these things. And I could break free because now I make enough money to have employees that can help me out, that can run the business while I'm away, you know, and you'll have your freedom. You'll have financial freedom. You'll have freedom um, from anybody tying you down in the nine to five. If that's what, you know, your nine to five does to you, um, you'll have freedom from owing anybody. So, you know, you want to be the lender and not the debtor you know you don't want to be in debt you don't want to owe anybody um and so you'll be you know in the clear in the black you won't have any debt or anything like that not bad debt at least um and you're just free your time you know you can depending on how you have it you can hire um someone to come help you with cleaning your house because you need time to um work on your business you can ha hire somebody to help you to cook if you need that sort of thing some people want to cook themselves and want to clean themselves, but then others are like, hey, I think I could spend two hours in the kitchen cooking and then another hour cleaning. That's three hours out of the day where I could be, you know, working on my social media or applying for more government contracts or creating designs for my print on demand or finding another trending product to do, you know, Amazon FBA. It just depends on how you want to live your life. I don't think anybody who has a chef or a cleaning person is bougie or uppity. You may find some people that are like that, but I look at it as a time thing. Like, I don't have time with me doing all of these things. Um, and then also working the nine to five. I don't have time to do all of that stuff. So if I have a cleaning person come in to help me once a week, so be it. Um, I do still cook my own food though like I like cooking so that's cool but that could be time consuming as well so I may just pick up something out that's fast um, most importantly though regardless if I cook it if somebody else cook it I always make time to sit down with my family and eat that food because that's important that's time that I cannot get back my daughter so number one we talked about Amazon FBA drop shipping drop shipping is the number one thing then number two, we talked about print on demand. Number three, we talked about doing some sort of digital ebook or digital print. Number four, we talked about YouTube. And number five was government contracting. Now number six, this one that I'm gonna give you is, you're doing work for other people, but you're doing it on your own time. You can start um, doing things for people on Fiverr. So Fiverr is a program that you can go to, like people who own businesses go to Fiverr all the time to find someone to create a logo or to create a social media post or to even write their digital ebook if they don't have the time to do it themselves. So if you like writing, if you like creating logos, if you like doing thumbnails for people's YouTube channels, if you know whatever it is that you like to do you can set up an account on fiverr and put your services out there and depending on what it is you can charge upwards you could charge per hour or per service whatever it is or however it is that you want to charge ten dollars an hour fifty dollars per logo one hundred dollars per ebook whatever it is you can do that and make money right away um, if you put it out there 
So that would be number six is going to Fiverr and offering services to people. And then number seven is creating a course. So they have Skillshare, Teachable, I think Udemy is one of them where you can go and you could create a course. Like for me, if I had the time, I would create a candle making course and just put it out there um, from beginning to end. So like from thinking about starting the candle business to, you know, actually getting the product out there and now you're thinking about scaling and getting on retail shelves, whatever else. I could do a course like that um, if I have the time, if I had the time to do it, but I just prefer to put it on here on YouTube for free because you don't have to pay for it. Um, but yeah, you could create a course for something that you're knowledgeable about, put it out there and get paid for it. Who is it? I think Terry Egioma. She is somebody who created a day trading course on, I think it was teachable and she made multi-millions of dollars doing this. People like her, her, um, she's easy to listen to because I've watched some of her videos on day trading and um she's been able to make money from giving her time and her expertise and her knowledge and creating that course it's quite expensive now um that is off of i think she still has stuff you can do on teachable but now she has her own course and for like the highest course is five thousand dollars and then the junior course is like 2500 but it doesn't make sense to get the junior course at 2500 if you want to really learn day trading you want to get the five thousand dollar course which is expensive but if you learn what you are there to learn if she's giving what you were thinking you were going to get with these courses i mean it'll pretty much pay for itself um because you'll be day trading and probably making five thousand dollars a day at that point so it just depends but that is another thing that you can do is create a course it's an e-course so of course it'll be online don't make it boring and make sure if you do create the course that you're giving all the knowledge and all of the information that you have to help people so that is another one um, and it's fairly simple you could create you know one video a day for the next few months and then package it all together and put it out there with your price um, super simple super easy if we keep going y'all and y'all do all of these things if you have time to do all of these things even if you do a few you could be making an extra 10 to a hundred thousand dollars a month right um so i mean i think it's absolutely worth it if you try at least one of them and see if you can make extra money and if you do let me know i would be so excited about that because i've helped somebody make extra money for their family or for themselves or to take a trip or if you want to get a new car and you don't want to pay for your car note out of the money that you earn on your nine to five then use your digital ebook money use your youtube money to pay your car note use your you know fba money to pay your car note whatever um there's so many ways so um that's all i have for you today but these are several businesses that you can start in 2023 that cost either little or zero money to maybe a thousand dollars, maybe even a little more than a thousand dollars. But it's still quite minimal um, compared to the things that a lot of people are spending money on nowadays. Don't get the Gucci purse, sis. Keep the three thousand dollars and go start a business. Uh, if you already start your business and you're making money to buy that Gucci purse, then so be it. But if you have debt and you're struggling and you're trying to figure it out, don't go buy the Gucci purse. Spend the $3,000 on something that's gonna help you to make extra money. So when you buy that Gucci purse, you don't even miss the $3,000 that's gone out of your account. Um, and don't use a debit card to buy it if you're buying it. Like I said, always use a credit card, charge card. American Express is a charge card because you don't actually get a credit limit. But if you buy your Gucci purse, with your American Express card, you get points for travel and everything else. So if you have it like that and you want to go buy whatever you want to buy, just make sure you're being smart about it and you're not using the debit card to buy it because it gives you nothing. If you use your charge card or a credit card that offers you points, then you get travel points, whatever else. Um, there's one card that I use and um, 
I'm able to get so many points that I don't have to pay for Starbucks. So I just redeem my points and then I go get Starbucks. Then another card I use, um, I redeem the points for free hotel stays or free, you know, travel. So, I mean, use it for what it is, guys. Use it for what it is. So, I hope that all of the businesses and business ideas that I gave you today will definitely help you to get out there and to make some passive income, some extra income, and get to get you to a place that you want to be um, this year so that you're not worried about money or income or anything like that or worried about having to be under anyone else's puppet strings working a nine to five if that's not your thing. Many blessings to you all, blessings upon you, your life, your business manifesting good things and big bags this year manifesting several you know streams of income and getting you all if you have debt out of it you're no longer the debtor you're the lender um and just growing your bank accounts and being able to live a good happy life with freedom financial freedom and freedom to move how you want to so video is probably long but the information is valuable and I really hope that you, you know, you learn something. And again, if you start something and it worked out for you, please let me know because that always puts a smile on my face when I see the people commenting that I did this and it worked. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I will see you all next time in my next video. As always, thank you so much. Bye, loves.